you know, all the seven years of work in the corporate world and the university degree and all the hard work I'd put it up to this point, I was like, I feel like I've been on the wrong path here. And now I'd been on a journey to get to that point. So when you then pick up the phone to your parents or, you know, your friends or whatever, and you say, I think I'm going to change a few things in my life here. You know, I'm going to start a business and eventually I want to leave my corporate job or whatever job I'm working in at the moment. And I want to be able to work from a laptop and I'm going to move to Thailand. Then I'm going to go to Bali and Mexico. And then I want to work from anywhere I can choose. And then you just kind of hear, oh, on the other side of the phone, like, oh, okay. Have you ever felt like your entrepreneurial dreams might be putting you on an island while your friends and family wave you goodbye from the shore? Well, today we're talking about how we can maintain our close personal relations while pursuing financial freedom. So I'm joined with Lewis again today, and he's always made it his absolute priority to look after his family, close relationships while pursuing his dreams and building his business. So Lewis, are you ready to dive into this episode today? Yeah, absolutely. James, looking forward to this one. Balancing the scales between the old personal life and business growth is a, a dance that I've learned step by step over the years. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a topic that I like talking about. And yeah, it's, it's definitely possible with a business model like high ticket dropshipping. And in fact, it was one of the main reasons why I chose to build an e-commerce business in the first place. But we'll come into that and the whole journey that led to me selecting that as a business model, I'm sure. Exactly. It's one of the main reasons why I started a business in the first place is for your family, for your close relations to improve. So that's the reason why we do it. And we hear so many people before they start a business that they struggle to know how to speak to their close family members, their close friends about the dreams that they have. So we're hoping in today's episode that we're going to talk about how we manage to maintain those really close relationships while we build big businesses um, and without having the usual constraints of, of time and being pulled away from family. So it's a very intriguing conversation, Lewis. So we'll kick it off with the first question for you. So when you started your business, how did you manage expectations with your family about what your business journey will entail? Yeah, it's a tough one because initially I think I was a bit naive to the psychological journey that somebody needs to go through to make that jump into entrepreneurship. You know, I tried explaining it initially and just said, like, I'd have a catch up with my mom on the phone. I was out for a walk and I just read um, The 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Great book. And it opened my eyes to this world of digital nomadism, online entrepreneurship, location independence. And I was like, this is really interesting. I, like, I want to do this. Like, this, is, this sounds amazing to the point where I could see this being my future. I want to leave my job. And, you know, all the seven years of work in the corporate world and the university degree and all the hard work I'd put it up to this point, I was like, I feel like I've been on the wrong path here. And now I'd been on a journey to get to that point. So when you then pick up the phone to your parents or, you know, your friends or whatever, and you say, I think I'm going to change a few things in my life here. You know, I'm going to start a business and eventually I want to leave my corporate job or whatever job I'm working in at the moment. And I want to be able to work from a laptop and I'm going to move to Thailand. Then I'm going to go to Bali and Mexico. And then I want to work from anywhere I can choose. And then you just kind of hear, oh, on the other side of the phone, like, oh, okay. And they're like, there's this weird um, mix of emotions happening deep down for them. Because if they love you and you trust that they are, you know, someone who has your best interest at heart, then deep down they do. But in order to have your best interest at heart, what they believe the best thing to do is to minimize what they perceive as your risk, right? So they're looking at your, all of these great, amazing ideas that you've got and thinking, are you potentially a bit delusional? And like, we don't want to see you give up all of this stability, the gold standard pension, hand back the company car, like all of the nice house, the mortgage you've got, and then just suddenly fall flat on your face in a few months when it doesn't work. Because I think especially from the people of a previous generation, our parents' generation, it was very common for people to join a company and then work for 40 years in that company and stay there for their whole career, right? I think in this day and age, that that just doesn't really happen anywhere near as often. But actually, I think that's where the disconnect was for me because at the time I struggled to understand why my parents didn't just grasp it immediately and be like, good for you, go for it, you know, throw in the notice and, and head off to Thailand. Of course, now being a dad and, you know, imagining my children are only small, but like when they're older, if they said that to me, I'd probably be a bit like, okay, yep, this is the, you know, the rite of passage that you have to go through. And I went through it and I'm going to support you. But there would probably still be a slight to injure me that's like, come on, like, I want to see you succeed here. But I know that the risk tolerance kind of pulls you towards back to the comfort zone. It's like, don't leave, you know, don't leave because you've got it nice here. What if when you go and aim for great, it's, it's actually, it doesn't work out. So 
happy. I struggle to understand why they didn't get it immediately. But I think this is the key realization that I've come to now. They hadn't been on the same journey as me up to that point. They hadn't discovered it for themselves. They were just being told the end result, the outcome, the thing that I was, this is really excited, hyperactive, like, oh, I'm going to go and do this and be really excited about it. But, but they have to discover the path in their own way if you really want them to believe. And the, the best way I can liken this is to, you know, at school, if you're anything like me back at school and you were forced to read books, I remember like, I still feel a bit of a like, pit in my stomach now where you get given this like long novel and they're like, right, you've got to have read it by Monday or something. And like, I'm like oh, the whole weekend, I just want to be out of the park and like riding my bike and out with friends and stuff. And I've got to sit and read this huge book and like, I'm not even interested in it. I've no. And so I associated books with homework and like things I didn't want to do. But years later i probably didn't read for a, a few years in my life you know in terms of like after school but years later now i love books i've discovered book i've like rediscovered books again i read every day and it's because i've discovered them in a way that i went on the journey i found books that i really enjoy and so i'm back there now and i read them because i love them but if i hadn't been on that journey like i wasn't the first time when i was at school and they were just forced to me and it was like right you got to read these books at school that's your homework of course i didn't like it because it was like change to my routine change to my hobbies change to so it was just forced on me right so that's the thing you have to consider let them discover it for themselves and you can guide them you can provide them materials and say would you do me a favor just listen to this podcast tell me what you think let them go on the journey a little bit as well yeah it's interesting there has to be a journey that you go on like with that perfect story where you didn't like books but now you know five years later he's completely unrecognizable from where you used to be perhaps or, or back further than that when you were at school and it's a similar journey that your parents and close friends have to go to. You almost expect them to get it immediately. I know I did when I was telling my family and close friends about this new business I was going to start and how I'd completely transformed the direction that I wanted to go with my life. That took a process for me to go through to get to that stage. But then you propose that to your family, partners, friends, and you expect them to get it immediately as well. But there has to be a journey for them to go through. And often you have to show them success or you have to show them that you're taking it seriously before they'll come around to that. So there is a bit of a difficult conversation, I think, that happens when you first approach this subject with your close close family and friends. Yeah, definitely. It's a tough one to navigate. And I think you, you to an extent, they you can give them the opportunity to go on the journey, but some might not want to. And that's OK, right? Because they're not you. They're not living your life. They're not in control of your life. So it'll be dependent on your own family and relationship dynamics. For me, I knew that showing my parents evidence of success was going to be the only way for them to really understand it. That's when it would hit home when I was like, okay, now I'm paying the mortgage with this. Now I've replaced my income with this. You know, now I'm taking you out and buying you dinner with this. And and then they understand like, oh, this isn't just some like idea that you had about something on the internet. Like this is actually now creating the kind of money that back in the day you used to have to go to the city and like work a full day's job in order to to achieve right and even then the day that i said i've replaced my income now for the last three to four months from my corporate job you know my wife and i are going to hand in our notices today and we are moving to thailand i think even then they were still struck but even when they saw the evidence of it they were struck with this deep fear of panic of like Ooh, uh, is my child potentially wasting their opportunities that they've worked so hard through uni to like are they giving up the gold standard pension all the things that we as the parents were taught in our generation were like the things to really strive for and stick to that stability that job for life you know so you can't blame them it's like they're not it's not an evil like the world's conspiring against you stopping you to be an entrepreneur people just sometimes think that the the l lowest risk option is to stay in your comfort zone and actually, in a sense, I guess it is because you're never going to strive for greatness. You're never going to be incredibly wealthy or incredibly happy, but you might be stable, you know, until you suddenly you get let go from your job one day. And then, you know, you find out actually there was no such thing as stability in the first place. But up to that point, I'd been on a journey. I'd spent seven years working in the corporate world. And I knew that one day if I wanted to, I could always go back to that world you know, maybe not to back to the same job or the same company, but I knew that there were jobs there. I'd been approached by recruiters in the past and I just thought I could go back there if I needed to. You know, I might just have to, there was people worry about like, how do you explain that gap on your CV? And I think Tim Ferriss puts it really well in his book where he's like, well, if you said I moved to Thailand, I started a business, I, you know, learned a new language. I moved to Mexico. I learned to surf. We did cookery classes. We learned, you know, all these things. That makes for an extremely interesting dynamic interview 
conversation and topic because it shows that you're a go-getter and so, so even that like if you're thinking about the safety net you know you could go back but yeah I, I think if I didn't choose to act on the opportunity to start a business I would have definitely looked back on that and regretted it and I think that was the realization for me that made up my mind I remember the meeting room that I was sitting in at the time that I realized hang on a second in 10 years time if I don't do this now I'm going to seriously regret it because my the course of my life will completely change. I'm not going to be able to live anywhere on the planet or spend all my time with my kids or work from my laptop or you know just be available in the day if I want to go and do something and hang out with friends. I'm going to meet a friend for lunch today. Probably couldn't do that if I had a job. So the fact that I knew I would regret it if I didn't do it in the future to me is like my barometer of should I do this or not? 